hello everyone this is code metaphor so what I was thinking and what we discussed last time was the uh, uh, functions pointers variables loops <clears throat> and we need to understand these these constructs of code and how you see all these lines that we have that the code is implemented line by line and uh, nested for loops and while loops and all these things you should have a good understanding of it so let me just before we jump into another function let's say I say for I you know range range is a Python function if I say for I in range of 5 and then for J in range of uh, let's suppose I say make it four okay now <clears throat> what's gonna happen is what do you think um, this basically means that for every value of I you will have J running till four okay now you can print here the value of I and J you see print takes multiple values also it's just like a function f of x1 x2 xn this is the same thing consider this as a function this is a function taking values we are telling it print me i and j values let's see what happens look at here what we got when i was zero <clears throat> when i become zero j the code came to the second line here j starts from zero one two three look at this zero one two three right at fourth value it's gonna break because we start from zero and then I is zero in these values and then <clears throat> and then what happens is that I is one and then J again starts from zero I becomes two J starts from zero so this is like a parent to child relationship you can think about it and if I have another loop within the J loop so I will be zero J will be zero then for every value of J this loop is gonna run first the child will run completely then the parent will when the parent is completely run this 0 1 2 3 4 for all these values the J loop let's suppose the W loop for for W in range of let's suppose 3 what's gonna happen is uh, child will run complete its process then the parent will move on once the parent is complete then it will move on to the next one just think it in, in, in this kind of terms and later on we will have um, recursion and all other topics which we're going to give you much more understanding of these things okay let's remove this I'm sure you have an understanding of this but you know we got to think about it we we have to like understand it and try to try to um, try to imagine it imagination is one of the best keys here in in in, in programming so um, um, what do we do now we think we, we we will start writing a function okay another function just for the sake of our practice so I selected an algorithm called the bubble sort uh, so what is the bubble sort it's an algorithm it's a sorting algorithm just what we did for insertion sort okay insertion sort uh, was differently implemented bubble sort is differently implemented the person who developed bubble sort this is his thinking you can imagine that this was his imagination he uh, the person was he was the person who came up with this idea and we're gonna implement and see what happens okay so the bubble sort is imagine I have five four three two one okay now what happens in a bubble sort that uh, I'm gonna keep comparing index zero value to everyone and find it the best place okay so I'm gonna compare four five with four and swap the values this is exactly what you're gonna do in real life you're gonna just imagine this is how this is like let's suppose the beginning of civilization and and there is no computer doing everything by hand and so here's the sorting mechanism they like uh, a mechanical machine can do that we develop it and it's gonna um, um, implement this uh, so see I know <clears throat> 5 is greater than 4 so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna swap so 4 is gonna come here 5 is gonna come here I'm not gonna write the rest of the values 
um, well let me write it 3 2 1 okay and then 5 is greater than 3 so I have 4 3 5 2 1 and then um, 4 3 uh, 5 is greater than 2 then 2 uh, 5 came here 1 and then 4 3 2 1 5 so now we know 5 is in the right place there is no more numbers I know this is the place of 5 and this is exactly the place of 5 then what's gonna happen I'm gonna go back uh, to 0 okay I'm gonna go back to 0 <clears throat> and now because the 0 index 5 was at the 0 index uh, I'm done with that and I'm now concerned about index 1 because I know that the value at index 0 is already sorted it's done you see how it, it travel all the way like this uh, that's why it's called bubble sort like it's just keep bubbling you know that the, the the bigger value will bubble up so so now um, what we're gonna do is let's just comment well let's just comment this so the com if you do uh, multiple comments it's like this and you don't have to worry sometimes you don't remember anything don't worry I may not remember anything I'll just google it there is thousands of resources over the internet you can look at it this is this does not show the ability of whether you can code or not okay so now you know how to define a function in Python okay just like in mathematics define I'm gonna call it bubble sort okay what is what our bubble sort will have an input this is the input of the value f of x this is the value of x what are you gonna give to the uh, to the function I'm gonna give it an array maybe I call it call it error okay maybe I call it uh, anything else I want my array now the function is ready <clears throat> okay the function is ready um, so now here we get confused oh my god what should I do now what should how or which loop should I understand or this and that as I explained last time it's just like in real world what do we do St break it up we need five we need index 0 1 2 3 and 4 we have to go through all of it okay and try to optimize the writing of your code okay I'm gonna show you how um, now <clears throat> for that I need 0 1 2 3 4 so that I can take everyone see the computer doesn't know anything okay even if I take one the computer doesn't know anything this is basically that neuron of that person who developed this one okay so now I'm gonna take index 0 index 1 index 2 index 3 index 4 compare all of them to any other value that they have okay so now for that to read a list of array let's have a for loop then for I in range of length of array every time I make this mistake so okay my array that's it now we have access uh, to the uh, all the indexes 0 1 2 3 I is gonna start from 0 go all the way to the length of my array now imagine what I do for optimization okay like the code should be pretty much come beautifully written and much more understanding so I can say my array length array length let's uh, do a camel case array length is equal to length of my array now see here again you're gonna understand the concept of pointers okay this is length of my array which is what which is the length of this this array I'm putting this in another variable called array length because I want to use that variable okay now uh, this is a pointer this is this is located in a specific location in a memory and this is pointing to that now what I can do is I can input this value here and say for I in range of array length now it's much more readable code right but then it has its uh, pros and cons but for our understanding and purpose it's, it's much better to do it like that okay now what I'm gonna do is the first thing is done we have access okay the second thing is I need to compare this value to every other value in the list okay and that should be a separate job make your own metaphor make your own 
um, kind of thinking and imagination. One, this has done one thing. We have access to five, four, three, two, one. Now I need another thing. So let's see. Uh, for j in range of um, zero to n minus one, because we are starting from zero minus i, and I'm going to tell you the the value of i <coughs> later on. Okay. Um, this is mm, in range of array length minus one minus i. Okay. Now that's it um, what's gonna happen now now j i is at phi i is at index 0 j is also standing at index 0 but I'm telling j now you go ahead through the end of array so I'm gonna say if my array of j is greater than my array of j plus 1 <clears throat> what I'm saying if my array of j, which is my array of 0, is greater than my array of j plus 1, which is 4, then do what? Then make me a swath. Then array of j will be equal to array of j plus 1. You, here, in other languages, we use a temporary variable to swap some values, but Python has a very good option that, uh, let's say, I can say my array of j is now currently my area of 0 is 5 right I'm saying now make pointed to my area of j becomes my array of j plus 1 that is good but now for we 4 became uh, my array of j become my area of j plus 1 but now we also need that my area of j plus 1 become my area of j right because if we, this will be 4 4 in the first like this we also want to make the other this 4 equal to 5. So I'm going to put a comma here and say my array of j plus 1 should be equal to my array of j. Okay. <clears throat> and guess what? What else? Nothing. We're done. Return my array. Okay. That's it. And now we're gonna do is let's have this now again I'm giving it to print I can do it any other way but let's give it to print I can print the value and say bubble sort uh, give it a value of five four three two one okay and then that's it one two three four five so <clears throat> It successfully um, giving us the um, sorted uh, array and we have one two three four five okay so what happens is this is um, what um, simple code every time this is going to happen for this uh, if you uh, let's let's have a debug okay let's debug the value and run and debug python file okay now see what happens we got it we got my array array length we got it array length is five right we go to the next line for j in range of zero now j becomes zero now this condition will be checked just like how we do in real life for five I'm standing here at five and I'm saying now well let's see this is a different person I'm, I'm, I'm noting it down five at index zero I have five and another column I'm writing now see let's see if index zero is greater than index one that's what's happening if array of j which is array j is zero greater than array greater than my array uh, uh, let's uh, okay my array of j plus one which is four then I want you to swap these values make my array of j equal to my array of j plus one and my array of j plus one equals to my array of j and that's what's happening now you see what happens this is swap is done you see four five uh, I'm I really I'm sorry but you, you have to follow the, my pointer here okay so now 
as I told you for a value of i0 this loop is completely gonna run so now j will become 1 j is 1 and the same thing is gonna happen again and swap is gonna happen again 3 5 it's gonna happen again you see 2 5 and it's gonna happen again you see 1 5 now it's gonna fail it failed and it told his father his parent that I'm done and his father said okay my value was 0 now I'll go to 1 now when the father is 1 what should happen to J J will start again from 0 right now the father is at 1 this is the new array we have forget about these one this is the new we are in this step right now 4 5 3 2 1 this step uh, 4 3 2 1 5 this is complete one iteration okay um, so then what's gonna happen is that uh, the same thing is gonna happen here j is gonna be 0 make a swap j is gonna be 1 make a swap j is gonna be 2 make a swap and it's gonna keep going till we get till all the, the father is done the child is done and then once this loop breaks you see how visual code gives you this line it's gonna break and come here now um, so now the 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 how understanding the code the lines the structures everything now see before this I might also print something let's just print something and say I'm done right because we know very well if it falls down from for loop I'm done let's let's run it you see it's written I'm done right and then I I can say I'm done uh, below is what I return below is what I return right and the formatting is it for Python has a formatting option that we are going to do later on sometime I'm going to show you how to do you see I'm done below is what I return one two this is just to show you this is just to show you how it fall down from for loop it has to implement this it cannot go to return it has to implement this okay so this is uh, just a general idea of function how do you write a function how do you think in terms of code try to think about it it's just like an algebraic expression when you learn how to how to evaluate how to solve the va an equation for the value of x or y or or quadratic equation you have used quadratic formula x is equal to minus b plus minus root of b squared uh, minus 4 is over 2a you get two values of x you see you learn you learn one time how to solve an algebraic expression right and then the next time I give you any any expression any any equation you know how to resolve it you know how to input the values why because at that time we think about it so here is the same thing the only condition here is we have to think about these things we have to understand it we have to know what's going on and the same thing is here my array the function gets my array which we give it comes here the function holds this this is the father you can you, you can imagine that this this is the this is the father of all of them this is happening inside this function so this is holding an array of length the array length and then it's implementing this thing it's like a small machine this is like a smaller machine at this very moment doing calculation for us okay so I'm gonna with the next video we'll talk about some more thing we're gonna talk about complexity of the code we're gonna talk about object oriented principles we're gonna understand the concept of an object um, we will code linked list um, let's suppose graphs and then and, 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 and binary trees and understand why do we need we haven't used any data structure here right now we did as an input which is an, a list on an array but um, we can use data structures in many other places too uh, uh, with the help of data structures we get a lot of calculations we we use it to optimize our our code process and all these things so um, in the next video we'll talk about them until then bye bye